have to keep focused on your shooting. That's uh, there's a the right time to, to be focused on that. You just have to get to that point where you believe in yourself and you know that you belong. Well, I think everybody is going to step to the line of this next next match knows that they deserve to be here. They're good enough. They're smart enough. They're strong enough, and they shoot well enough. Both of these teams, excellent teams, coming out onto the field to play for the women's team gold medal match. We're getting excited about this one because we get to see Korea, and we get to see the best shooters from Korea. Three Olympians on the line today here in Colombia. Korea got here by knocking off Colombia 6-0 and Mexico 5-3, and they did it with Che Mi Sun, Chong Hee Jin, and Ki Bo Bay, the Olympic gold medalist from 2012 in London. So Ki Bo Bay, Chong Hee Jin, and Che Mi Sun on the line for Korea, and they'll get some strong, stiff competition for the team from China. China came out of qualifying ranked third after defeating Canada six to nothing, beating Japan five to four in a shoot off that went to China by the score of 24-23. And then it was a 5-1 win over the United States. So let's meet the trio from China, Wu Chiaxin, Chi Yu Wong, and Cao Wei shooting today for China. Ji Wong, 26 years old, Cao Wei, 24 years of age, and Wu Jin is 19 years old. Jin ranked 27th in the world, Ji Wong, 11th in the world, and Cao Wei, 61st. Meanwhile, as you look at Korea and their rankings, Ji Mi Sun is number one, Kibo Bei is number two, and Chong Hei Jin is number eight in the world. Talk about a lineup. That, that's a good lineup, isn't it? And we are seeing here right now the Olympic team of Korea. This is, it's been decided already that this is their Olympic squad that will be in Rio. And I bet China is also hitting hard in their preparation because um, we have all the three Chinese women ranking very well in the qualification round here in Medellin. And after all, this is a rematch of the last three Olympic finals. So I'm excited to watch it. And as we go along, Bernardo, I want you to talk about the Koreans and their technique. Obviously, Korea setting the standard for the rest of the world, the gold standard, so to speak, for the rest of the world in recurve archery. They do indeed. And surprisingly, Korea opens up with an eight. She's moved her sight already, maybe given some feedback to Choi Nisson. So two eights. Yeah, maybe that was too much. So Che Mi Sun with an eight, following up the eight by Chong Hee Jin. And now Kibo Bay. Averaging 9.3 points per arrow, puts it in the nine ring. And on occasion, we have seen Korea get off to shaky starts, but that doesn't seem to last for very long. It, it doesn't. We say that the Koreans, they give you only one opportunity, and you'd better use it if you want to challenge them. China with a stronger start, almost into the 10 ring. Wu Jin. A nice effort to get it started for China. Almost in the exact same spot. Cao Wei, 24 years of age. A team silver medalist in Medellin back in 2014. Now, Chi Yu Wong. And great, great grouping by China. Except for Chang Hei Jin, everyone started high to the left as well. Just like Mexico did in the previous match. So back to Korea and Chung Hee Jin, the 29-year-old, who strikes gold. Oh. 
Just outside. Just outside, yes. Something really nice to uh, observe in their technique. They, they, they all, the three Korean archers, they do something which is very, very Korean, very typical of their technique, which is stopping a little bit while drawing. Almost got it inside that 10 ring. And just outside. Yeah, that, that stopping in the drawing is what we I was going to call, ask you. Yeah, that's what we call the, the setup. Like, you, you raise your bow arm, and then you put it in place. You make sure everything is in place so that when you start drawing, you don't have to worry about your bow arm anymore. First shot outside the gold rings for China. So what is a very competitive opening set? If you're just joining us, the bronze medal has already been decided. It's gone to Mexico. Now it's China and Korea battling for the gold medal here in Colombia. Right on the line, the nine liner, that'll count as nine. I think she was lucky. She wasn't very happy about that shot, but still it wasn't the gold. A nine will give the set to China. Instead, it is a seven, and the set will go to Korea. And it goes back to what you were saying just moments ago. Korea will give you an opportunity, maybe. maybe. And if they do, you had best take advantage. Yeah, you'd better use it. It's very rare to see them giving you two opportunities. But, well, um, China, they're doing a, a... It's very nice to see that the teams, they do a lot of talking while the, the arrows are being scored and being retrieved from the target. And this feedback the archers uh, give, give to each other and also the feedback from the coaches, it's very important. And I think it can be a game changer sometimes, especially regarding wind or just a little flying technique. And, well, it's just set one. I mm -hmm. think there's a lot of fun to, to see yet. You seldom see Korea shoot a 52, and when they do, I, I would imagine if you had told China that Korea is going to shoot a 52 in the opening set, they would have been very happy about that and thought, we've got a great chance to take that set. Yes, however, they shot a 51. Alas, it was a seven on that final and sixth shot of the first set for China that handed the set points to Korea. So Korea leads it two to nothing here in the gold medal match. Stage two of the 2016 Hyundai Archery World Cup Tour, along with Bernardo from Brazil. I'm Carl Arkey, and we hope you're enjoying our live coverage here from the grounds of the uh, Museum of Modern Art. Our thanks to Hyundai, proud sponsor of World Archery. New thinking, new possibilities. And right now, China looking for a new opportunity here in the second set but opening with an eight. Still spread the group. It's interesting because China started off so strong with three straight nines. Since then, it's been eight, nine, seven, and eight. But back in the gold ring. That has to be encouraging for China. A 10 right here would loom large. Instead, it's an 8. So 25 points posted. Korea has a great chance to get a 4-0 lead already. Chong Hee-jin, team bronze medal two years ago here in Medellin. She starts off with an 8. The wind's starting to pick up a little bit. Not a major factor, you wouldn't think. Now a good look at Jamie Sun. Jamie Sun also with an eight. Yeah, the wind's picking up. Uh, I think she aimed uh, too much off the gold. This is when you rely on your Olympic gold medalist. Kibo Bay lines it up, lets it fly. There it is. And she does it. Found the sweet spot. I believe that's why Kibo Bay shoots last, because she is probably the most experienced archer they've got in the team, so it's good to have such an archer to decide when it's needed. When you absolutely, positively have to have the shot, you look to Kibo Bay. That's an eight. Wu Jiajin. Picked up a team bronze medal last year in Antalya. 
Won a mixed team silver medal here in Medellin last year. Makes her home in Beijing. Now it's Cao Wei. Uh, Way outside. And it brings up Chi Yu Huang. Who had three team medals in 2015, two bronze and one silver, also finished ninth oh. in individual competition in Shanghai. Uh, it's interesting to notice in Zhang Hejin is that she doesn't put the string at the tip of her nose. She, she puts it a little bit to the side. That's quite an unusual feature. Seems to work. It does. Did indeed. on that <laughs> shot. <laughs> she just showed us. So Korea trying to take advantage of four straight eights by the People's Republic of China. Wow. And now Korea seems to have it dialed in. Oh, China opened up their group and uh, this just makes Korea relax. And that's the last thing you want them to do, to relax. Key connects. Three straight tens, four straight tens, actually, and they take the set with ease. 56 to 49, pick up two more set points, and may well be on their way to a sweep as well. Yes, the, the Chinese, they, Fu uh, Jiaqin, when, when she left the line, she looked helpless because she's pretty much lost in the wind. And uh, I know that feeling, and it's very awkward because it's not only the wind, it's also the, the pressure you make on your bow arm or maybe the release. So if you start losing the confidence on where your arrow, uh, arrows are hitting, you might, you might as well lose the confidence in your own technique. So it's not just a matter of knowing where to aim, it's also a matter of knowing how your shot is working on the wind. And it's a very t t difficult situation. When, when doubt starts to creep in and there's second guessing, you're in a little bit of trouble, aren't you? Yes, definitely. And China, they will have to excel to, to score two set points and to stay alive in this match. Well, that's all, what they have to be focusing on right now. <clears throat> Not about winning the match. They just have to worry about winning this set. This set to stay alive. Just this set. Take care of business with these next six arrows. So six arrows to go. Six very important arrows for China. As they try to stay alive in this match against Korea, the gold medal match for the women. What a quick draw she has. Fairly quick release, but it paid off. That's what China needs. They desperately need tens right now. Trying to put some pressure on Korea. And they're dialing the pressure up. A 10, now a 9. Oh. And that takes some of the wind out of the sail for China. After a strong start with the 10 and the 9, now a 7. I think the wind has stopped a little bit. That's why she shot way to the left. That's awkward. Kills the spider right down the middle. X marks the spot for Chong Hee Jin. Curry is not leaving it easy. Chong Hee Jin, a gold medalist in Antalya in 2014. Now a good look at Che Mi Sun who won the uh, individual gold medal at the World Cup Finals in Mexico City a year ago. And here is Kibo Bay, who will defend her Olympic title in Rio. She was a double gold medalist in London. And Korea can afford to have one go a little bit astray at this point. They still lead by one in the set. What could be the final set? Well, they, they have the advantage of the tie. If they tie in this set, Korea still takes the gold. Only five points needed to win. Yes. Strong, strong effort. You can see the resolve by China. Wu Jiajin. Wu Jiajin, 
did definitely find her shot, and hopefully this gives confidence to the, her teammates. Wu Jin has defeated Kibo Bay and Tanya Ting in individual match play. So you know how strong she is. Yes, she's shooting for gold later on today. We will see her later on. Some great medal matches coming up this afternoon. Here in Medellin, Colombia, stage two. So a couple of tens and nine, but then a pair of eights and a seven, not the hand that China was trying to deal to Korea. Korea just needs a 25 to win. That's a piece of cake for them. A nine delivered by Chong Hee Jin. Looking for her 11th World Cup medal. Now Che Mi Sun, ranked number one in the world, 19 years of age and showing the great form that got her that high ranking. Kibo Bay going for the kill shot. Needs six to win it. And gets a 10. Kibo Bay coming through in the clutch, putting it away, and Korea in command from start to finish, and they win it in a clean sweep as well, defeating China by the count of six to nothing. Winning that set, 56-52. So after that first set, which China won by, or excuse me, Korea won by one point, 52 to 51. It was all Korea from that point on, Bernardo. Yeah, Kibo Bay's shot, last shot was great. The coach, he, he was happy about it even before the arrow hit the target. And well, th that's what happened. Um, China gave him the space to relax, to feel comfortable, to feel confident. And that's the last thing you can do to Korea.